Alright, hi guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these effects that's pretty common in a lot of sci-fi movies. I'm not really sure what this is called. Uh, maybe like uh, a hyper jump, like a star tunnel or something. But it turns out this is actually pretty easy to make in Blender. And uh, with the new EV engine, you can actually see it in real time, which if you've been a long time user of Cycles is actually really cool. So we're going to be mostly focusing on motion, motion blur and particle effects uh, in this tutorial, and it shouldn't be too long, so let's get started. Uh, so first, we're not going to delete the default cube. We're leaving it here. Just for once. And we're going to scale it up a lot. So this is going to be a tunnel where we're going to put all of the stars. Let's say we give it a scale of 40 on the x-axis. Then we need to orient the camera facing it. So right now our camera is gone, so let's find it right here. And we're going to move it all the way to the end. Um, and you're obviously not going to be able to see anything. You don't need to worry about that. But one important thing is you want to have this uh, pretty wide. Right now it's really narrow. It's pretty close to like the field of view of the camera and you want to make it seem like there's actually stars outside of that so what you want to do is uh, scale it uh, to make it a lot wider so one way you can do this is s shift x and that will scale it on every axis except for the x one and that will make it uh, a bit broader so maybe a bit up there we can always adjust this later so you can delete that lap and let's set up the world so Quickly, we're just going to make it a bit of a darkish blue. That looks good. If you want, you can go to... Um, I'll post a couple of resources in the description where you can find like actual star maps from like NASA or you can just search up uh, HDRI stars. But I don't think it's going to be too helpful because we're going to put in some motion blur and stuff so you're not really going to be able to see it. And that's not the primary focus anyways. So now stars. Uh, we want to have a couple of different colors, so we'll start with an icosphere. Hit uh, period if you want to like focus on it, uh, but you have to have a number pad. Uh, add a new material, and we're going to go into the shading tab. Delete piece, oops, not the whole thing, just the principle, just the principle shader. And we'll replace it with an emission shader, and we want to give it a random color, and we want to control it. So how do we do that? We'll go into object input. And you can see there's a random button here. So we can actually just put this into color and we can look at this and not going to be anything special, but you can see if we duplicate it, we might get some different colors, which is the whole idea here. But how do we control this? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So we just keep, we only need one of them and we'll add a color. And this is the range of colors we'll pick. So random gives a number from zero uh, like this to one over here which means that each instance of this is going to have some random color along this if we move this this way a lot more of them are going to be white and very very few of them are going to be black exactly so that would be one twentieth so one in every 20 sphere should be black um, and we can change this so we don't want to actually have any black stars because you know that doesn't really make any sense so we can throw in a couple of blues maybe maybe a couple darker ones um, some violets that sort of thing now you don't need to worry about any of the interpolation settings right now so you can leave it as just linear that's fine it doesn't really make too much of a difference in this case and you want to turn up the strength to say eight and we'll change this later so right now they're all going to appear white, that's okay, and you may want to scale this up a little bit. So we can just grab this end, just move it along on the x-axis. We're going to need this tunnel to be quite long. Okay, now to the particle system. Uh, this should be the, this should be pretty straightforward. So we make a new particle uh, system, and we set to hair. We need to turn on advanced. So we can get some settings that we couldn't get before. We can change the source from... Okay, actually, why don't we change the 
uh, object first. So uh, instead of render as path in the render tab, we'll change it to render as object, and then we'll pick our icosphere. You can just use the eyedropper and click on it. And there you go, you can see our icospheres. But the problem is that they're. Uh, so let's move the camera again. So just double tap Z, that moves the uh, camera forward and backwards along its point of view. So if you just look at this, all the things are on the sides. And you can see we have that random color thing showing up, which is pretty good. So we know it's working. But so what are some things you might want to change here? Well, we want to give it definitely a random size. And so not all the stars are like the same shape. We have some variety there. Might also want to make them a tad smaller. We definitely want to increase them. So my computer can probably handle um, maybe 500,000. That's slowing down. Uh, depending on the specs of your computer, you might be able to do less or more. Uh, don't set this to too high initially because you might end up crashing everything. So we'll just keep it low for now. Um, now you can also see it only comes from the faces and we want to change that. And that's why we need to have uh, some of these advanced settings. So we need to make sure it emits from the volume. And there we go. Now we have stars coming everywhere inside uh, this object. And that's actually quite a bit. So uh, what we can do is either turn in the number or we can turn down the size. I think turning down the size is probably a better idea. Cool, so now we have like a, a nice little star field. Alright, so the next thing to do, we need to make the walls of this uh, transparent. Now, for some reason the show emitter thing doesn't actually work, like we can still see the walls of the uh, emitter even if we have this on. Uh, sorry, disabled. So what we want, what we want to do is take this and give it a material that's completely transparent, which is pretty easy. Just give it a transparent uh, texture. We need to change the blend mode to alpha clip, and now we can see right through it, and we have like this star field that you can see pretty clearly. Great. Okay, so now what can we do? Uh, Let's just take Bloom and turn that on, and we'll be able to see these things glowing, which is a pretty nice effect that you definitely want to have. And now for the actual hyper jump effect. So we're going to have to animate this. And how do we do that? It's pretty straightforward. We're just going to move it in a line. But how are we going to do this? One, we want to have motion blur on so we can actually see it, uh, see like the stars turning into streaks. and. What we want to have it do is move slowly at the start and then really quickly jump almost all of the way to the end and then slow down close to the end. So we'll have this maybe as 250 frames, that's a good number. So maybe for the first 60 frames, uh, we'll have it slow down, maybe go a little bit, and we'll have it decelerate for 20 frames, kind of like pausing and getting ready to jump. And then for the next 40 frames, we'll have it jump. Um, almost to the end. Okay, so we are not going to need that many frames then. Anyways, so these are numbers I'm just making up. You can change them to suit your liking. Anyways, so for the f so first we need to keyframe the location. That's how we need to keyframe actually. So we take location here. At zero, you hit I and then hit location. Then move to 60 frames. You want to move just a little bit. I, location again. 80 frames, you want to move a lot less than that, so it looks like it's decelerating. So we can see it move, and then get a bit slower. We can also drag these keyframes, which is pretty cool, so we can actually see uh, the deceleration like change. There we go, we can see it get slower. And then suddenly we want to have a jump, so say 40 frames, and we're going to make a jump all the way to the end. Pretty much all the way to the end. We want to leave a bit of space, otherwise it's just going to be, um, you're only going to be able to see the world background, which is going to look really bad and fake. There we go. So let's see what this looks like. And it just, you can see it just shoots across there. And we can stop this at maybe 150 frames. Right, just moves a little bit. Make sure. And 
if you go into the perspective of the camera, you can actually see this happening, which is pretty cool. And what's even cooler is that we can see this motion blur in real time. Now you can see these kind of getting stretched out a little bit, and how do we determine how much like stretching it gets? So that's what the shutter speed is for. So we're going to turn this up to like crazy number. You want to change it to like 10 or something. Super high like that. We'll have pretty long strokes, maybe 20. Maybe 30. Anyway, so this basically changes how long the shutter speed is, um, which is uh, a way to determine how long these streaks are. How long, like, if you do photography, you probably know that it's anyways. Not important. But we have this effect right now. You can see it's kind of fuzzy at the edge, so how we want to improve the quality is we can turn up the sound at 64, and we can see that how that smooths that out. Uh, there's diminishing returns to this, so turning this any higher than 64 is probably not going to help very much. I don't even know if you can. Anyways, that's about all you have to do. And we have this effect pretty well, um, pretty well done right now. So some other cool things you might want to do. You can definitely turn up the bloom a little bit. You can turn down the threshold so things end up brighter. Um, also in the final render, we're going to actually add a bit of our own uh, glare effects. Why don't we do that now? Go to compositing. Use modes. And we just want to see what this render looks like down here. So what you can do is add a bit of glare. Filter, glare, break that in. What happens is all glow. You can turn up the size. Or one other thing you might want to do is hide this. So you can either like try to hide it in the inspector tab or whatever, or you can just move it really far up and then no one else no one is ever gonna find it. And there you go, it's lost. Very lost now. And you can now sit back and admire a cool effect that you have that EV allows us to preview in real time, which is super cool. Yeah, we got light streaks like that. One of the interesting things that sometimes you can see in these sort of effects is that the camera doesn't actually move along a straight path like as it's actually curving, so I'm not going to show you how to do that here, but if you want, you can try to figure that out yourself. But uh, our camera only moves along the x-axis. Sometimes it curves and it goes like in an arc, probably like that. And that would be a pretty cool effect too, so you could try that if you like. Um, another interesting effect, which I'll show you how to do, is put a light at the end of this tunnel. How are we going to do that? Easy enough. We'll just double click. We set the origin, set the cursor over there, and we'll add a point light. And we need to turn on volumetrics, so we need to actually have this cast sort of like a fog. So we can see our point lamp, and just drag it into the center of our screen, have it somewhere at the end of this tunnel, and we'll turn up the power to like, to like a thousand. Right now you're not going to be able to see anything because we don't have fog yet, so what we can do is change this world. We want to add a volume scatter node. I'll get into the volume, and that's going to make everything disappear because now it's like you have very heavy fog. So what we want to do is turn the density down to like 0.01. There we go, we can see this cool um, like fog effect. And the way you can turn this up is just increase the power, increase it to like 10,000. It's probably going to like overwhelm the whole picture, which could be cool if you want to just fade it to white at the end. And you can always change the color too. Yeah. Now, if you don't want things to pop into existence, you can always change the clipping, which is where the camera stops being able to see stuff. But um, be careful, because if you turn this too high, what can happen is that the motion blur is going to stop working, and I have no idea why that happens. But generally, it seems that with more clipping, um, your motion blur is going to be have less and less of an effect. So you can leave it probably at 100, and that would be fine. And 
this is probably a bit too high. Change the color a little bit. That's definitely not high. A thousand is good. And okay, so you can just keep on tweaking these settings. You could add a bit of depth of field too if you like. Um, that's fairly easy to set up. Just hit the camera, depth of field. Uh, now everything's blurry. So what we can do is change the focus distance. Be a little bit higher. But only the things that are closer to you are visible. Say 15. I mean, you're not really going to be able to see that effect too much. Yeah, a lot of this is just the layering effects on top of each other. There we go, and we have a cool effect. You might want to make this color probably a bit better, something that fits the scene. Make a nice indigo bluish. Yeah, so that's, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.